What's going on beautiful dollars? It's Tracy and I am super excited to be talking to you guys about my updated Grixis control list for Modern. I will list in the down bar, um, I want to say I have two but I'm not too sure. I'll list them in the down bar below. Um, and kind of how I went about brewing this is I didn't really look that much at other Grixis control decks in Modern when I rebuilt my deck because I had this deck back, this was actually the last Modern deck that I played before I took like a two year break, and then I revisited and like rebuilt this deck. Um, I didn't really look at a lot of other people's deck lists, I pretty much looked at mine and actually went off of, you know, my old list, I kind of net decked myself, um, and I, I don't want to say I net decked, I like looked for myself for inspiration, um, and I pretty much just rebrewed um rebrewed this up and I'm very happy with the list. I did a couple of changes like I don't like to just build the deck and then talk about it because like I'm going to change cards with it inevitably, especially like EDH decks. So, I'm really excited to be um talking to you guys about this deck. So, I will list in the down bar below my old list and my new list. Um I'm really happy with my current list. I feel like whenever you put your deck list out there, people are like automatically trying to give you advice and like I don't want to be like I'm not welcoming advice, but like I'm the one playing the deck. This is not a very popular deck and like for in terms of control and in modern in general that I feel like a lot of people are like, why don't you do this? Like I'm happy with my current list and I'm not really gonna change anything. So um and it's not me being like rude, it's just me being like I've considered a lot of other stuff. It's just I'm very happy with this and I'm not really in the the mindset to change it. I've been testing it a bunch and I'm happy with it. So um let's get into it. Not gonna talk about meta base as always and sideboard list and both the whole deck will be listed down below and tap it out if you want to check it out. Um, and follow along with me. Okay, first we have two enchantments. We have two search for Ascontas. Um, I felt like this was the card that the deck really needed. It needed a little bit of like extra, like kind of sort of card draw. This card doesn't really draw you an extra card, but like it kind of gets and filters away those cards that you don't necessarily need. What I really like about this card is like if you don't want to flip it, you don't have to, but flipping it is really sweet in this deck. If you're just kind of like at that point in the game where all you need are removal spells or lightning bolts. So I think that um, Search is just a really fantastic magic card. Um, I really like it. I'm only running two in my list and I, I'm super happy with this card. I, I think it's very amazing. I really like it too with the flip side um, on the late stages of the game where like nothing is really going on to and you don't have a whole lot to do with your mana. Um, I really like this um, this aspect of it. So Surge Risk Conda, great card. Super happy it's in there. Um, okay, cool. Let's talk about instants. Whenever people see um, control lists, they, their head goes to counter spells. Um, this list has more removal and hand disruption. It only has two counter spells in the main. Uh, counter spells obviously in the sideboard. Um, I I just find that I prefer to uh, like I like having my options. I like having my hand disruption. I like having my removal, and I like having some counter spell. You know, some two counter spells, um, kind of thrown in there just for things that I can't really disrupt or I can't really remove. The counter spells are kind of there for. Um, so I want I run one of counter flux. This is one of my favorite counter spells and something I think that's very underrated. Um, but whenever I run this color combination, you will always see me running counter flux. Yes, it is three mana, which is kind of unfortunate, um, but in games that it's good, it's really good. It's really good in the control mirror too, just saying when like you really need something to fight over and you need to win like a Jace or something like that, or like their their late game bomb, whatever it is, um, and you really need to deal with it. Counterflux is a really sweet answer. Um, I just really like this card. I'm a huge fan. Um, okay, uh, the other counter spell is called Counter Squall. I love this card. I felt like I really wanted this card in here because you kind of, I don't want to say you don't care about creatures, but like you kind of deal with a lot of like creatures. So having the Counter Squall is really sweet in there because you're just like, okay, I can't really deal with this non-creature spell. Like I have all this other removal for creatures. This is for those things I can't otherwise really deal with. It's non-creature. It hits a ton of stuff in the format. Um, it hits Blood Moon mainly. Um, it's also two mana, which is really important. So I'm um, not that honestly, I don't want to say I don't care about Blood Moon, but I don't care about, like a lot of people think it's going to hurt me and it like kind of does, but I run a lot of basics in my build and that's just me. So yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, then we have two of of Electrolyze. Ah, uh, this is this this card actually has a funny story. Um, in my original list back in 2015, 2015, this card was in there, right? I was like, um, I'm I'm gonna put Electrolyze in my original build. It's gonna work, be great. 
I ended up taking it out. I don't remember what I put in its place, but I ended up taking electrolyze out. Flash forward now, a couple years later, we're talking about rebuilding this deck. I'm like, the deck just needs electrolyze. Card is amazing right now and probably will be for like a long time or if not ever. Card is great against Lingering Souls, which this deck actually has a hard time with, and it sounds kind of weird, but like, you don't want to terminate or like Fatal Push a token. That really sucks. You have to, and I've done it before, but you know, Electrolyze is really kind of your ultimate answer. Okay, the way that I can ultimately phrase to you how great this card is, is think about this card that it kills two creatures and draws a card at instant speed for three mana. When you phrase it like that, you're like, damn, this card's awesome. Sometimes it is just like you do two damage to their three, two, or whatever it is. But um, even if sometimes you, they only have one creature and you're like, do one damage to that, one damage to you, draw a card. Card is insane. I absolutely love this card. I think it's ultimately what this deck, like one of the things this deck really, this deck really needed to kind of get it there. Uh, love it, super happy with it. Okay, uh, Fatal Push. Yeah, oh my gosh, this card's nuts. Um, it deals with so many things in the format, and it's just, like, amazing. It's just, like, you know, it has that revolt, which is super good with fetch lands. Um, but yeah, Fatal Push is not really a lot to say about it. It's a great removal spell. All right, uh, one of the, you know best, best cards in this deck, hands down. And I honestly, a uh, Culligan's Command. I'm pretty sure I've done a card focus on this um, card, which is where I spent an entire video talking about one magic card, because I freaking love this magic card so much. It is one of the best in the deck, hands down. The only thing that would be better about this card is if it said draw a card, but then it'd be busted. And, you know, at that point, it's like, should be just playing cryptic. But um, this card is really, really amazing and is so good in like every matchup. Like, it's so funny if people are like, did you ever, did you cut like a Culligan's Command? I'm like, no, never. I never cut this card. Like, you will see me cut other cards that are highly, I will never cut Culligan's Command. It is always a good card. So first off, um, you get a creature back from your graveyard to your hand. Um, one of the spicy cards that we'll talk about a little bit later, I'll mention this card. Um, it's really, really good for getting back your Snapcaster Mage. Um, I have been in instances like, um, story. So I was playing against Lantern Control and, um, I had like a, and he had like Witchbane Orb and like Pithing Needle on my Jace. So I couldn't target him. So I cast like Culligan's Command and I like destroyed target artifact. And then I like did two damage to my Snapcaster, which sounds weird, but you're like, oh, and they had Ensnaring Bridge. So I couldn't attack with the Snapcaster anyway. So I was like, okay, do that. Kill my Snapcaster. And he kind of looked at me like I was crazy. And I was like, mm, no, kill my Snapcaster. And then I was like, Culligan's Command, and then like I had another Culligan's Command, and I like Culligan's Command, destroy target artifact, return my Snapcaster, snap Culligan's Command, or like whatever, like it's a nuts magic card, really good against Slider Control, by the way, really good, really good against Affinity because of the destroy target artifact, really good against Tron, um, good in a lot, a lot of matchups. So anyways, it's also got the ability, um, target player discards a card, which is really sweet. I really love K commanding them when it's on their draw step and they have one card in hand, really good against that really good too if you like if you like jace them uh uh thought uh not thought scour um if you jace them uptick targeting them keep it on top then calling its command make them discard it yeah that's really sweet um or just our target artifact i talked a little bit about uh amazing i love the fact of having mean board artifact removal this card by the way hoses affinity you pretty much never lose the affinity matchup either fantastic affinity matchup um, and then it deals two damage to your player. Absolutely amazing, because again, this card totally two for one's affinity. You just return an effect to so their cranial plating, do two damage to their ornithopter or whatever. Like, card is just a house. I could spend like the rest of this video talking about Cake Man. It's it's a nuts magic card. Love it. Okay. Um, Bolt. I don't really think I need to say a whole lot about this card. It's great. Run the card. Yeah, obviously. Four of. Uh two of of terminate. Card is really sweet. Um, deals with so many different things, um, and it's at instant speed, which I really love, so card's great. Okay, let's move on to sorceries. Um, this was actually originally a Terminate, but I, I needed to run a Dreadbore. I felt like I really needed this for, like, it's really good against Planeswalkers, obviously. It's two mana destroy target Planeswalker, which is sweet, but it's really good in, like, I like it because it's not just that. Like, not every deck in Modern runs Planeswalkers, right? But, like, 
you're they're gonna run creatures that you're gonna want to destroy and it is at sorcery so it's not great in like every matchup but like i find this card to be really important in this deck um i i definitely like i said i cut a terminate for this because i was like i just really need this um it's not really good in every matchup so it does get cut i would say especially against slower decks where like you really need that instant speed removal because they have like a haster or like you're playing against um what did I play against the other night? Uh, Gorio's Vengeance, where, like, you you need to destroy their stuff instant speed, you know what I mean? But, um, you pretty much just lose that matchup anyway, the matchup sucks, but, um, yeah, Dropper's great. Um, okay, I'll talk about these cards kind of back-to-back, -back, even though I'm going a little out of order, um, but I like to do it in alphabetical order, the way it's organized. But, um, Inquisition of Kozilek. Yeah, um, I know a lot of people are favoring Thoughtseize more, which we will talk about in a second, but I do really like Inquisition still. It does hit a great deal of things in the format. Are there, there are matchups where it is absolutely dead? Yeah, absolutely, but, like, you, no one's deck is just going to be perfect straight off the bat for every matchup. Like, that's just not going to happen. So, um, it does get cut a great deal of time, but I like the fact that it's, you don't lose life. And again, it, it is CMC three or less, but like you hit so many things with this card. Like, it's definitely not something to worry about. Um, and on the flip side, thoughts ease. Um, yeah, uh, God, this card's really amazing. Um, it's so good against things that you can't really deal with like you don't have a counter spell and you don't have like removal like Thoughtseize just gets rid of their collective company or like whatever it is that like you can't realistically answer that's a creature that you just kind of like move out of the way pretty much um yeah cards like great I like my 2-2 split everyone is has the biggest opinion on this in the world I always like an even split um maybe I would even do 3-1 for the Thoughtseize uh, the mana base is like, yeah, I mean, it's gonna hurt you, and there are times where I do a great deal of damage to myself, but again, I do run more basics than the average person, so, yeah. Okay, this is probably the one card that I get the most questions on, and that is Rise Fall. Um, I, every time I cast this card, I have people asking me, what is this card, what is it doing, um, hold up, can I read that? Um, this card is gets cut a lot, I will say, from sideboard, because it's kind of when I don't really know what to take out, and I'm like, Rise Fall isn't great in this matchup, I'm gonna take this out, um, and I don't want to say that, like, it's a bad thing, like, it's not a great card, because in the matchups that it's good, it's really good, so, um, Rise Aspect is you get to return target creature, um, you basically bounce a creature, and then you get a creature back, so it's, like, kind of reminds me of K-Command, that aspect a little bit, which I really like, um, I'm a huge fan of casting Snapcaster Mage as many times as I possibly can. There's kind of always, like, if you don't even know what to do with it, you're just like, okay, Snap Bolt. Like, there's this something you always just kind of want to be doing. Um, and bouncing a creature. Now, there are a lot of really bad targets for this. Like, Eternal Witness, or if you're playing against humans, they have a lot of, like, things that do something when they enter the battlefield, like Kite Sail Freebooter and stuff. But, um, in matchups where, like, I picture, like, the best case with this card is you return a Snapcaster Mage to your hand from your graveyard, and you get to, like, take away, like, their Tassiger or their Tombstalker or their Grimag Angler. Um, I just find that to be, like, really, really strong, I would say. Um, it's really good in that. Um, just bouncing anything. Like, this card's really good, I will say, about Gorio's Vengeance, because if they're, like, you know, they're, they're not going to be able to cast, like, they play, like, Gorya's Vengeance, so, like, they play that, and then they, they only have, like, three mana, you know what I mean? So you just bounce their creature, which is really amazing. Um, so, yeah, okay, that's really amazing. So then we talk about Fall. Um, Fall is really interesting. It's really good if you already have access to information and you know kind of what's in their hand. Um, so you can kind of, they shuffle their hand up and then they discard two cards at random. Um, they do have to be non-lands, so like you can't make them discard lands, which is kind of annoying, but, um, I've done this when I have two cards in their hand, and even if you just have the access to information, like you just know what's in their hand, is really powerful. I really like this card. You probably won't see it on like anyone else's list, but I'm a huge fan of it. I originally ran this. When I ran this list, I ran two, but I just don't really have room. Um, there's there's also been like many cards that have come out since then. Um, you know that I like weren't in my original list, so yeah, card's great. Um, okay, four of of Serum Visions. I. Funny, this was originally opt, and then I was in a conversation with my friend Isaac, and he was just like, you know, I think your deck really needs Serum Visions. And, like, that simple thing, and I was like, yeah, I think you're right. Like, I think that extra advantage of scrying, like, me casting this at instant speed, like, doesn't really do a whole lot. It is, I will say, kind of nice in, in turns where, like, 
you you have like two mana and so you're like okay like I could have like a terminate or something like I could terminate their creature or if they don't have a creature I could just like use my opt you know what I mean but if you serum visions then you kind of like lock oh that wouldn't even work oh no yeah if you had a fetch line that would work never I'm sorry I could have shock them that would work never mind um but it's really good against like um the like the kind of benefit of like casting opt on their turn doesn't really do a whole lot like it's not like storm where like it's a one mana thing but it's you know it's just it's like it's just an extra card like it doesn't really matter like that you doing it on your turn versus their turn so and i like that extra bit of scrying information um really like this with jace as well i find this is really powerful just pitching away cards and then just you know putting them away um yeah i i uh, yeah I originally was someone who's like I'm gonna play ops I'm gonna play ops and then I was just like I I missed my serum vision so I rebought him and was like not regretting anything I'm um, definitely happy about that change okay um planeswalkers um ah uh, Jace the mind sculptor I actually did just an entire card focus on Jace the mind sculptor if you want to check that out so I don't really want to spend that much time talking about him um and I also feel like I've been talking so much about Jace recently that it's kind of like beating a dead horse but um yeah he's amazing um I wholeheartedly don't agree with those people who think he's too slow like I don't really agree with that um I, I mean I understand where they're coming from and like I understand that, that whole like idea but um I just find him too powerful like it would be really interesting to like play games like without him and and put other stuff in his place um which would probably just be like more removal you know or, or like I don't I don't even know what actually what I would do there maybe another rise fall because I really like that card but um it just maybe something maybe another electrolyze like I don't know but um yeah I again I don't really want to spend that much time talking about him because I just talked about him a lot but really quickly his fate seal really strong which is his uptick um super underrated not a lot of I find not a lot of people are using it but um it helps you get to his ult which can be relevant in games that lantern control game that I was telling you about where like they don't have creatures so like they're not attacking you they're not attacking Jace you know they're running staring bridge whatever their goal's trying to mill you so you're like Jace like Jace is one of your wins against dealing with lantern control so um and that deck I feel like is floating around a lot of places now so it's really sweet to um to uptick so you can get to his ult um really solid too in games that matter where their top card matters a lot where like if you you don't have a way of, of dealing with it you can just uptick um his brainstorm amazing draw three cards yes hello um always do that and then pitch away these cards I don't want and then use fetch land to shuffle them away um his minus one bounce creature I find myself using this a great deal really good matchups where like you don't have another removal spell and you need another turn to like realistically draw something or you're just going to be dead on board so you're like bounce it so I don't die um then is his minus I take back what I said in that video though because I said I don't know how relevant his ult is in modern uh yeah okay guys I was playing lancer control in two out of the three games which I ended up winning that matchup um I ulted Jason mind sculptor so just saying uh it can happen it was the most satisfying part of the nightless burial here um yeah he's awesome love him okay um then we get to creatures i am running eight however one of them is not a creature um karanos karanos is one of the cards that i get asked about a lot too that i'm rise fall um i ran him in the main board in my original list i run him in the main board now if i run when i build jeskai control i will run him in the main board there because i love him um yeah okay like card just kills people and he is so hard to interact with. I can think of like a handful of spells in modern that deal with him. Detention sphere, counter spells, hand disruption, Ugin the spirit dragon. Did I get everything? Okay, those are the things that I'm initially thinking of off the top of my head. Moral of the story is your path to exile is adorable because he's never a creature. In order for Karanos to be a creature, I would need Karanos, Jace, that's four loyalty, um, three Snapcaster Mages, or a Torrential Gear Hulk on board. Moral of the story is I need some amount of those things, and if I'm doing that, I'm probably already winning, and Karanos getting path doesn't probably really matter. So moral of the story is he's not going to be a creature, which is fine. I don't need him to be a creature, because he's going to kill people with his, what he does. Okay, um, you reveal the top card of your library. If it's an on land, you bolt something. You basically just bolt their face to death. Sometimes you bolt their creatures, sometimes you bolt their planeswalkers, but you probably just bolt them to death. However, if it is not, if it is a land, you, you know, casually just get to like draw an extra card. So you're probably still getting access to more lightning bolts or things of that like. 
So, um, yeah, he's amazing. I don't want to spend that much time talking about him because I will spend a very good day. He kills people and he's so hard to remove. I absolutely love him. I just, I can't say enough great things. Card's great. Uh, Snapcaster Mage. I don't think I really need to talk that much about Snapcaster Mage. It's a blue staple. Run for it. Like, it blows my mind when some people are like, are you running like three? No, I always run for Snapcaster Mages, literally no questions. I uh, can't even tell you how many times I've like ambushed Viper at Snapcaster Mage. Sometimes you like have two mana and you need to not die and you have nothing in your graveyard and you're just like, I don't know why you don't have anything in your graveyard, but you're just like, maybe they've exiled it actually. And you're just like ambush Viper, the Snapcaster Mage. Like even in games where really like your opponent is hard or going after your graveyard which like is fine and like I get why people are like oh you're playing like control I have to like exile your graveyard for your snapcaster mage I'm like yeah that's great but like I can still ambush viper my snapcaster mage just saying I can still kill you with the two one and it, it happens a lot people are like how do you win you sometimes you just snap bolt you bolt snap bolt and sometimes you just hit people with the two one because they have no creatures because you've killed them all snapcaster mage is amazing okay um, Tassiger. Anyone who knows me knows that, um, I love Tassiger. It's one of my favorite magic cards. I'm running two. Um, he's a really good late game card and one of the best, in my opinion, in modern in general, because you're getting to stages of the game where you don't have a lot of cards. This deck really doesn't have a lot of card draw. It really doesn't. I mean, I say that and I'm like, geez, Electrolyze. Um, Search for Scott is like half. I don't want, really want to call that. Card advantage, maybe not card draw. Um, scrying, like, that sort of thing, and serum visions, but, like, you know. Anyways, um, so Tassiger is, like, really, really sweet in the late stages of the game where you have nothing going on. Um, you know, you're, you're not trying to cast Tassiger, like, on turn two. You're not playing Delver of Secrets. If you're playing Delver of Secrets, like, listen, I mean, you should just be playing Grixis Control, because it's a better deck. But, um, if you're just, you're not trying to cast Tassiger early on. Like, some people get, like, like, fixated on that. You don't... You don't want to do that because your goal is like you're trying to like kill them in the later stages of the game where you playing that could stop you from casting a fatal push. You know what I mean? So you do that. Um, you know, you cast him and then you mill two and then you just casually like your opponent picks. And the way that you typically do this is you strategically plan it around. You have like only juice in your graveyard and sometimes bad things go back to your hand like you know, you, you get back, like, your, your thought sees when they're, they're held in, and, like, that sucks, but, like, it just happens, and what are you gonna do about it? But, um, yeah, just getting something back, you know, when you get to points of the game where you have, like, when it's just, like, land lightning bolt, they're like, I guess I have to give you this lightning bolt, but it just sucks for them. He's amazing, love him. Last card in the deck is Torrential Gear Hulk. Goodness, what an improvement for this deck. Um, I really can't tell you how great this card is. And one thing I really want to note that's important about this card is that they can't dismember this card, which I feel like there's a lot of dismembers popping around places because I feel like Eldrazi decks are, are playing that, which makes sense. I've seen humans play it, and I feel like that's a card that pops around. And I don't think it's good in this deck anyway, because like what you're going to pay for life to kill a Snapcaster, like, that just doesn't sound great to me, you know what I mean? Like, at that point, I'm sure other removal spells are better, but, um, I feel like that's just something that typically goes out, because you're not running out of creatures, and you can't hit Karanos with it. If they know, like, people aren't gonna know I'm playing Karanos, unless they know me and they know my list. But yeah, so he, sorry, my camera cut me off, um, talking way too much. So, you can't dismember him, which is a card that I think is flying around everywhere in the format right now. Um, it's six mana, five, six, flash. It's basically Snapcaster Mage. However, you can't target sorceries. I just want to note that because a lot of people misread this slash, um, not, you don't cast sorceries, which honestly isn't the big deal, like, isn't a big deal. What I typically find with Tarnishield Gear Hulk is, like, it's a great game closer. It's a great game finisher because, again, a lot of people are like, how do you win? Um, doing this with, like, a counterspell is really sweet. Um, like, I find my... My trauma matchup is abysmal, but it's really good when you you don't have a Snapcaster, but you have Trenchfield Gear Hulk, and you get to that point in the game where you can cast him, and then they cast their big thing, and you like counter it like Disdainful Stroke, which I have in my sideboard, or um, what's the other card? Um, uh, Ceremonious Rejection as well. So really, really sweet for that, or honestly, just Cull Against Command, like whatever. Um, card is amazing. It's like Snapcaster Mage, but bigger. I don't want to say better. Um, I just want to say it's bigger. It's got a bigger butt and yeah, card's great. So 
that is it guys that is it for my grixis control modern deck tech super good to talk about this deck again i'm very very excited and now i feel like my modern updates will make a little bit more sense so you can see like hey what i've been playing with and all that kind of stuff um and i want to talk about cards that i want to get and like if i want to change decks or anything like that i want to talk about it um that a little bit more in another video but yeah super happy with this deck, deck. sweet love it but uh that's it for this video and i will see you guys on thursday